makes lighter. So some of the innovative materials that um, we were researching, our team and myself, is photocrystals, um, which can uh, absorb the incident radiation. And some of them are like hexagonal uh, boron nitride. And the other um, um, concept is called dielectric metasurfaces. These dielectric metasurfaces are dielectin metasurfaces made of nano-sized silicon particles. So these uh, can change the wavelength of the light and they can modify the polarization phase and um, the light uh, properties, uh, frequency, amplitude. So if we can use this concept and make our spacecrafts in such a way that the frequency of this matches with the frequency of the, uh, the particles that are uh, incident, then a resonance would occur and the uh, radiation would be uh, kind of absorbed in, in, in one sense because the frequencies kind of merge. So it's kind of a uh, guiding the way in one sense to uh, not affect the spacecraft or electronics. So this is um, all the dielectric metasurfaces. And the photonic crystals is the same concept because they uh, don't allow the light to pass through so the radiation can be reflected back. And we are researching more into to see because um, the space uh, radiation consists of both electric and magnetic fields and uh, basically working with the uh, properties of light, how to use that phenomena and make the particle, make the uh, meta surfaces, for example, in this case, that would reflect the uh, same wavelengths as in the space so uh, we can guide the and I have my other uh, the team in the next video. Yes, video? Yes. Hi, my name is Sarah Zorn. I am in uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Wilczewski's chemistry class and our team, Leo and Amanda and Owen and myself, we are working on the spacesuit design for Mars, especially um, because um, Mars has the dangerous uh, environment like the UV radiation. So we are um, researching and looking into different materials, how to block the radiation. And my team is going to talk more about uh, the different materials. Uh, I'm Leo, and the topics we are focusing in are about crystals or layers that we can add to our original spacesuit and might protect the astronauts from the damage of radiation in space. So we are finding ways to split the radioactive, radioactive particles and reduce its kinetic energy before it damages the astronauts. Amanda, my added to it. Hi, I'm Amanda. I've been researching into dielectric metasurfaces, which could have the potential to block against radiation. I found a couple articles so far, and I'm excited to continue researching it. Uh, and I'm Owen. Um, I am a uh, high school student with uh, my colleagues here at Rowan, and uh, I'm, I, I've been specifically looking more into um, metasurfaces as well. And I'm really excited to see how this uh, technology is able to revolutionize how we construct spacesuits and what we think of space exploration uh, and creating a lightweight but also uh, efficient uh, spacesuit system. So. NASA engineers comment personally I would go with the meta surfaces because it's it, the materials could be really lighter and
the concept of just guiding the waves how we want them rather when they are just all over. And also because these are in a tran the waves, the, these are all in the transient state, which is like they're not in a steady state. So this concept of metasurfaces works better compared to the other ones. We are uh, just in the um, beginning of the research and we were able to find this much so far. But later on, uh, I, I think uh, next our semester. professor, yeah, next semester, <laughs> we might be uh, doing an experiment. Because they have some places like in Long Island, uh, there's a place in Long Island that's never been changed that does the radiation testing. It might be, you know, you might be looking for ways to piggyback some of That's in uh, Rhode Island? Yeah, in New York. Biologically inspired design? Simulation? My name is Eric Gabrielli Miller, and I'm going to be, I, uh, well, um, so um, I'm a sophomore at Bird County Academy. I'm, I'm interested in physics, computer science, and um, forest space exploration. So um, I'm especially interested in the prospect of creating a self-sustaining uh, forest colony, and therefore I'm excited to present SpaceX's uh, newest step towards that goal. So um, what? Um, so this presentation is actually a prelude to my full 15-minute presentation that I'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, in that presentation, I will be demonstrating how I simulated almost the entire uh, flight plan of the SpaceX Starship in a program called Kerbal Space Program. Um, so um, in this presentation, I'm hoping to give a uh, general overview and introduction to that presentation. So first of all, what is Kerbal Space Program? Um, Kerbal Space Program holds very dear place in my heart. I was introduced to Kerbal Space Program as an educational game, and I very quickly fell in love. Um, it allows uh, players to do anything from build small rockets to learning, or, to learning of orbital mechanics and building enormous space stations around uh, Jupiter, for example. Um, recently, my, one of my favorite parts about the game has been its extensive modding support. And due to the uh, immense abilities of the modding community, I was able to, uh, for, for, to for the presentation, transform uh, the program from simple game into a shockingly accurate simulation of the real-life conditions of the SpaceX Starship, um, using uh, mods that add realistic aerodynamics, a uh, solar system, and also uh, parts that have accurate uh, delta V val uh, values and ISPs for the Starship parts. So what are the Starship and Super Heavy? Um, Starship and Super Heavy, uh, so this is a program that's currently in development by SpaceX. Um, it is their solution to, uh, to long range um, well, transport and um, especially to um, have crewed uh, high capacity transport to Mars. Uh, the reason why this uh, craft is significant is that it uses a few uh, unused before technologies that will lead to immense success, those 
uh, technology mainly being its full reusability and orbital rejuvenating technologies. So um, even putting aside um, elements like the full stage uh, combustion cycle um, engines that I'll be talking about in the full presentation, um, these two technologies are revolutionary. Um, they allow for very, very low cost, um, they allow for very low cost um, space transport while also um, allowing for uh, large capacities and for large distances to be uh, traveled. So um, the way that the uh, flight plan works on a large scale is uh, the uh, Starship launches on top of its super heavy booster, as seen in the previous slide. And then once the uh, booster provides its boost, it'll perform a boost back burn and go back and land on the launch pad. In 24 hours, that same booster will have launched multiple fuel tankers up into orbit. These tankers will dock with the main Starship and transfer their fuel over to the ship so that it had enough fuel to go to Mars. Then what it will do is um, it will land, uh, well, it will do a health and transfer to Mars, land on Mars, refuel on Mars, um, SpaceX has extensive plans on how this will be done. And then it will perform the whole process in reverse and culminate with a hover slam landing on Earth. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to simulate the landings due to technical difficulties with the program, but besides that, every single element of that flight plan is fully demonstrated. So, and lastly, why should we care? Well, this is, um, the SpaceX Starship is, um, with its orbital refueling and full reusability technologies, it really is the future of space exploration. It is the most efficient um, engine in the most efficient rocket um, that we have ever built as a species. And it will allow for uh, low cost transport to Mars and allow hopefully for a self-sustaining Mars colony and our race to the interplanetary future. Thank you. Starship using, um, uses methylox fuels, um, it means that uh, what they can do is they can uh, break down CO2 and water from the ice cap and use only those materials to make uh, the full-fledged uh, fuel system. Um, um, any other questions? Yeah. I, I, I think that's pretty accurate. I think you're right. It, it uses methane. And, and I think this is really interesting. How many, how many passages do you have on your Starship? Is it the same as Elon Musk? Um, I believe that the, um, that the, so uh, I actually didn't count. Um, so I can't, I can't answer that question. Um, but I do know that these parts are accurate, uh, both with the, uh, both with the delta V of the, uh, well, sorry, uh, both with the fuel content with relation to delta V, with the ISP of the engines, their thrust with, with relation to the weight, and again with the uh, crew capacity of the ship. Okay. Okay, good job. Thank you. Uh, okay, you got it. The first one. So my name is Amelia and I'm a freshman. I actually worked on this presentation with my partner Ellie, but she couldn't make it today. This is just a bit about me. Uh, I am interested in exploring mental health issues and the psychological challenges that astronauts would face on a mission to Mars. So the um, epic challenge is a uh, mission to Mars. 
Uh, we are interested in exploring the psychology aspect of the mission, specifically the psychological effects uh, being away from home for so long would have on the astronauts and the solutions to this problem. Um, there are also uh, several other things that could cause stress on such a mission, uh, including rapid acceleration, close confinement, isolation, fear of missing out, um, and more. And uh, so we would have to find solutions to help the astronauts uh, deal with these problems. Um, and according to NASA, uh, all in all, your trip to Mars would take about 21 months, nine months to get there, three months there, and nine months to get back. This means the astronauts would go almost two years without seeing their family or friends back home. They would have to find ways to stay in touch and keep up with happenings on Earth, despite the millions of miles between home and Mars. Um, so, this is what we will focus on. Uh, we wanted to focus on ways to cope with separation, uh, and these would be strategies that the astronauts would use in order to reduce their stress, such as a VR headset to uh, experience things that they can't have in space that would remind them of home and reduce their stress levels, and there's also lots of existing technology to aid them in communication with their family and friends. This is why we uh, picked this topic. We believe that uh, the mental health of astronauts is just as important as their physical health, especially on a strenuous mission such as this one. However, the psychological aspects of space travel are often overlooked, so we believe people should be more informed on the topic of mental health, of the mental health challenges astronauts on a mission to Mars would face. Moreover, we believe it is important to develop solutions to these problems to make the mission as smooth as possible for the astronauts. And so there are also